Welcome out to Weird Wednesday, everybody. This is John House, or Use Toy, here uh, with my partner in crime, or in strange crime, or in dumb crime, Daryl House, or Suburban Hobo. How you doing, Daryl? Yeah, just getting weirder by the minute. <laughs> I'm weird. Well, you know they say you are what you read, so I read the newspaper. I'm weird. <laughs> I've got a weird shirt on today. I tell you what, I love the shirt. I, that whole jaundice thing works for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you got for us today? I tell you, I have all Florida stories, and, and I, I got some great stories. This one, just, this, this was just so ludicrous that it, it captured my eye. That, yeah, I, you know, they have the column in the Sun Center called Florida. I think there's a whole website dedicated to these stupid stories. But this comes out of Monroe County, which is the keys, which adds a certain amount of credibility to the story. But, but Matthew William Corp, he's 35-year-old down Tavernier. That's about halfway down the keys. He was busted after he falsely reported his girlfriend was kidnapped. He said that his wife actually had been kidnapped by two men who were heading north driving a U-Haul truck. When a deputy arrived at Corpse Address, he found a car parked out front that was running with the doors open and two women leaving Corpse apartment. One of the women allegedly told the deputy that she was now Corpse ex-girlfriend and was moving out. <laughs> when Corpse came outside, he was obviously intoxicated, began yelling at the deputy as well as the women. He explained that he had called the false kidnapping report to keep his girlfriend from leaving. It didn't work. Corpus now uh, charged with misuse of 911 and resisting arrest. Mm -hmm. I, I get a great way of keeping my girlfriend. I chain her to the bed. <laughs> uh, obviously. You know, if you're going to go with the uh, the... Uh, intoxicated story, then, then I've got to do this one. Last week, you know, we talked about the uh, the DUI attorney that was drunk. Well, um, apparently in Louisiana, a woman showed up to uh, with her children with her. She goes to court to fight no insurance, failure to secure registration, and driving under suspension. Uh, slurring, yeah, kind of making a, a bit of a an ass out of herself. No. So the the judge orders the blood alcohol concentration for the woman. Point two seven one, oh, three three times the uh, the legal limit, over three times. And and yes, in uh, in many jurisdictions they consider point three lethal. Yeah. <laughs> so her, her kids were taken away from her. She was put in contempt of court. And now we'll have to spend the next 150 days in jail. I knew that I would now. Hey, well, I tell you, this was kind of a weird story. The, the fact that there is such a thing that is definable is what caught me in this story here. Uh, up in Daytona, uh, police find a death kit. In a strange husband's car. Now, have you ever had reason to concoct a death kit? Do you know what that even is? I don't. I, I've never heard of it. Allow me. <laughs> when cops pulled over Tolga Mirren, uh, 29 years old, for allegedly driving a stolen truck, they discovered a death kit. Now, how did they know that's what it was? <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, we're going over to Target. We're going to get us a death kit. <laughs> so, anyway, the stolen truck turned out to be the least of his worries. The kit contained a loaded Glock 9mm handgun, a fillet knife, a screwdriver, a gallon of bleach, latex gloves, 50 feet of rope, several rolls of duct tape, two large coolers, a roll of heavy-duty garbage bags, and prescription meds, according to the arrest report. <laughs> I would call that a death kit. Well, I'm, I'm guessing that's got everything you need right there. Well, they pulled him over. He couldn't explain to what he intended to do with those items. His uh, the wife, who was listed on a domestic violence injunction and been hiding in Daytona Beach, told cops that he had, she hadn't had contact with him since March of 2011 when he was last arrested on the charge of violating the protective order that she had been granted. She also said 
uh, Mary University from Lehigh Acres, which is the other site. You know, Lehigh Acres is, is southwest Florida. Daytona is central eastern Florida on the coast. She said that uh, this was her quote. Uh, he had no reason to be in Daytona Beach except to kill her. Uh, you know, with all those things, I'm guessing that starting to make a little more sense. Had a fairly significant kit. Well, you know, I've got one uh, to praise the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, from Florida, Christina Andrews, panhandles for bigger boobs. I'm uh, for all for that. Uh, apparently, uh, this, this lady uh, has a sign, a huge sign that says, Not homeless, need boob job. I got and a couple so, of bucks for her. Yeah. She, uh, she says she thought people would just laugh, but she's really been uh, surprised by the uh, outpouring of, of both money and affection. That and is Florida, she, right? Well, she's not the first woman to do this. Apparently in July 2012, a 37-year-old uh, woman from Akron, Ohio, did the same thing. And now is proud to be the owner of a nice new set of boobs. <laughs> nice rack lady. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we've had a uh, we've had our share of, of people ended up naked lately. <laughs> on weird men's day. <laughs> and I have one here. Usually, on usually during a crime. Well, this one actually, I, I think the naked is the crime. But out of Tallahassee comes a story of uh, Daryl, which he doesn't spell anything like I spell mine. I'm, I'm totally innocent here. Daryl J. McGinnis, 63 years old. So, like, this is an old naked guy. This is about as bad as it can get. He refused to get out of the lake when Tallahassee cops ordered him to do so, telling the officers that he was naked because his clothes, his clothes had somehow come off. After being rescued, the man insisted he entered the lake to take a bath. You know, I, I go with that old song, Tequila Makes My Clothes Fall Off. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great song. What else you got? Well, uh, this one, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. Ulysses Corwin, Never Miss a Shot, was arrested for bank robbery. How about that name, Never Miss a Shot? So uh, that's, that's, that's a real name, or is that a that's, pseudonym? That's his real name, and and it's spelled just like it sounds. Never, Never miss a shot. I wonder if, if he is like an arms expert, or if he's uh, the best drinking buddy he ever knew. <laughs> well, I you know I wonder if uh, you know because they they said that he might have had uh, other people that were involved in the robbery. I'm wondering if if like maybe Danny, uh, I'm a getaway driver, might have been the uh, the other guy that they're looking for. I'm thinking between used toy suburban hobo and wood fairy, never miss a shot. Can probably get on baloney brain. <laughs> Oh, well, that's all I've got for today. Oh, well, it's been another wonderful get-together with you folks. Thanks again. I mean, we're always so grateful that you stop by and visit with us for a little bit on Wednesdays here at BalonyBrain.com. John, <laughs> take good care of that shirt. We will see you next week. 